Day two of testimony in a local courtroom for the Georgia Innocence Project. Eric Hurd was arrested back in 2009 for a murder he says he did not commit. A jury sentenced him to two consecutive life sentences. The crime happened in College Park just outside Atlanta, not far from the airport there. Two men broke into a home and held two sisters at gunpoint, killing one of them. College Park is about two hours and 15 minutes away from Sandersville, but 14 years after the crime, that's where Eric Hurd is serving his prison sentence. So that's where the hearing is. The I-team's Meredith Anderson is the only reporter in that courtroom. This hearing isn't to decide Eric Hurd's guilt or innocence. A jury has already done that. The jury found him guilty. The Georgia Supreme Court upheld that conviction. This is what's known as a habeas corpus hearing. And the purpose of that is to determine if Eric Hurd's constitutional rights were violated at his trial. And if so, did it affect the outcome? Eric Hurd enters the same way, shackled, but a new day brings a new courtroom. It's bigger than the one Monday where the now retired GBI sketch artist described meeting with the woman who survived the crime just a few hours after it happened. I would describe her as spent. She didn't have anything else to give. She, she could not concentrate on anything but her dead sister. At Hurd's murder trial, Marla Lawson testified the victim gave her an 8 out of 10 confidence rating on the sketches they created. But after the trial, this video surfaced. I said, on the scale of 1 to 10? Yeah, I heard that. A 5. A 5 ain't worth circulating. No, maybe a 3 even that's worth circulating. That's after the sketch was over, clearly showing Lawson was mistaken in court. So I don't know why I dropped the ball. Tuesday, the Georgia Innocence Project called a witness identification expert who said under oath in the hundreds of cases she's worked, she's never seen police interview a victim under such duress, so close to the crime happening. She testified even in officer-involved shootings, investigators typically wait 24 hours to do interviews. This hearing was supposed to be over today. It was only supposed to take two days, but it's going to take much more time than that. The Georgia Innocence Project still has witnesses to call, and the other side, known as the respondent in a habeas case, also has witnesses to call. A lot is at stake here, possibly a man's freedom. So, of course, the I-team will be watching. Reporting from the Washington County Courthouse, I'm Meredith Anderson on your side.